ברק דיהו, בהשם יהו שי בהשם, רכה הקודש. Welcome to another live lef- lesson. The name of this one is Kai Sai Stigma, equals 666. And pretty much this is centered off of a video I was watching last night. Well, actually, during the course of the day, I was watching this video that Elder Pastor uh, did called Shame, 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 the update, a must-watch video. And uh, pretty much... He was going into it, and uh, I'm not sure if it was this video or another video where Nate said that the 666 is just a number of a man or something along those lines, which is really the number of the whole beast system of Esau. Um, I just put this video in the description, I'm sorry, in the uh, comment section of the live lesson. I forgot, I mean, it actually came to me afterward to grab it, <clears throat> so I wasn't able to put it in there. But pretty much we're going to deal with that 666 or stigma, or should I say Kai Sai stigma, you know, to show you that it's all a part of the system, not just something that, you know, it's not, it's just a number of a man, you know, like almost, almost, I mean, I don't think he's saying that, but almost like implying that it's, you know, the, the, uh, the, um, Antichrist. So lucky, I'm just... Stirring up this, you know, this coffee that I made. I'm not trying to uh, get y'all in the sunken place by by the spoon and the cup, whatever. You know how that woman was trying to get Jake. Anyways, uh, years ago, <clears throat> excuse me, Spirit had me do a lesson on Revelation 17 and 5. This is a re-upload on GMS Info Doc Channel 12. I believe it was on GMS Info Doc Channel 11. Um, it's on uh, GMS Lashawan Kodash in two parts. <clears throat> and I'm not sure if it was on GMS Lexicon or GMS that, that got got uh, got clipped. But in this video, you no know, spirit had me go through the phrase in the Hebrew of Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abomination of the earth. And how that, when you break those down, it goes into, in the Hebrew, goes into a numbering system. And the three phrases, Babylon the Great, Mother of Harlots, and Abominations of the Earth, those three phrases separate from each other, when you tally up the numbering system of the Hebrew, they all add up to 666. So here in Revelation 13, 18, it says, here is wisdom. Matter of fact, before we get to that, let's go here real quick. Let me move this over. <laughs> Revelation 17, 5, and upon her forehead, meaning America's forehead, the, the whore, Babylon the Great, was a name written, Mystery. So it's a mystery. Now, keep in mind, when you read the Hebrew, the Hebrew is more of a straightforward language. It doesn't have all these fillers that you have in the English language. In the English language, you have to put a lot of fillers in to make sense of the sentence. In the Hebrew, it's just straightforward. You know, you don't have to add all those the extra words in there to make a, a sentence. It's just straightforward. Just like, you know, like Gad, you know, would speak, you know, you know, like straightforward. Because that's how the English, I mean, I'm sorry, that's how the Hebrew language is. You know, me go kill white man now, you know. It wasn't all that, and I will go, and I will, you know, all of that other extra stuff, all that extra cheese. So when you break down these three phrases, Babylon the Great, or Baba Hagadawala, the mother of harlots, and abominations of the earth, when you get to Babylon the Great, it's just straightforward. I try to find it online. Uh, the one... Um, the one site that I did have with the Hebrew New Testament, they clipped that. And I had another Hebrew New Testament, they clipped that. Then I just went to another Hebrew New Testament, and it had a different, um, different word. So it was kind of, kind of tough to get through it. But here in this one, the word that they have here is wala tha wa So like wala tha wa Nawath. Now this worked 
And I believe you had to remove the la out of there. Like I said, you know, you the, the Hebrew language is straightforward. So it should be and abominations earth or the earth. You know, you don't have to add the la, you know, in there. So and abominations of the earth. And this added up to the 666. All right, the, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, not this one. It was the Ama La Wa, Ama La Za One Wath, which you hear, Ama La Za One Wath. That, uh, I believe this one here, you had to drop the La, if I'm not mistaken, or it was a part of it. Like I said, it's, it's been years since I've gone over this breakdown, so it's going to be tough to, you know, to go through it unless, you, you know, unless I go back over it and I'll review it and then be able to break it down again. But this video pretty much breaks it down. So those are the three phrases. And all three of these phrases, when you break them down, they break down into 666, which is where you get your term Kai Sai Stigma, which we'll get to that. Now here you have the Aramaic Hebrew, right? Abba, Gada, Ha, Waza, Chata, all the way down to Tha. Now the fir the the, uh, num the Hebrew numbering system goes from one to ten, from a ba ga, which is one, ba is two, ga is three, all the way till you get to ya. Ya is ten. When you go to ka, they go up by increments of ten. So ka is twenty, la is thirty, ma is forty, so on and so forth. Then kwa is a hundred. When you get to kwa, the letters after that they all increase by a hundred. Why that is, I don't know. It's just a numbering system for the letters, you know. So you have Kwa, Ra, Sha, Tha. So 100, 200, 300, 400. And when you go back here, you know, you break it down like the A would be 1 and the Ma would be 40. So that would be 41. And then you would add these together here, all of these letters. And then what you would do is add all of the numbers. When, once you get a tally of every letter and how, and um, every letter and how, Every letter, let's see, let me see if it'll come up right here. Once you get, see the law, wouldn't, you wouldn't have it there. It would be Ama Zawanwath, Mother Harlots. All right? So you see how you have the Tha, which is 400, the Wa, which is 6, the Na, which is 50, so on and so forth. You will add every number of each of these letters together, and you would get a total of 510. Then when you add 5 plus 1 plus 0 equals 6. That would be the second 6. But Baal HaGadawala, same thing. And then Abominations of the Earth, same thing. This is where you get the 666. Six, six. This is why it's a mystery. This is why it even says here, And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the Mother of Harlots, and Abominations of the Earth. Now you have to kind of go over it because it's a little bit more advanced. So you kind of will have to go over it a few times before you could actually get it. Uh, but I showed you, you know, the numbering system. And when we get to Revelation 13 and 18, it says, here is wisdom. So the prophets were given visions. The prophets were also given breakdowns of the vision, even though they didn't understand the vision because the vision wasn't in their time. But they were given breakdowns. Like that's why it says, here is wisdom. So the angel of the Lord is breaking it down to John the Revelator, you know, or John, the Apostle John. It says, let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. So it's not just a number of one particular man. It's the number of the beast. When we look at the beast, the beast it has seven heads, ten horns, and ten crowns upon the, the, those uh Ten horns. And when we go to the 17th chapter, it breaks down what those seven heads and ten horns represent, which is a whole conglomeration of the different empires of Esau. And Bishop Nathaniel should know this because he was in at One West, and this was something I was taught about the seven heads, ten horns. This was a constant rotation and repetition every week. You know? So I don't you know, he must have either took the bag or the Lord took it away from him for a period of time. And I say that for a reason. You know, there's a dream that he had. At a, he told of the pastor 
And, you know, at the end of the dream, he got the oil back, which the oil represents the knowledge. Right? It says, for it is a number of a man. Yeah, because this beast is not an actual beast. It is a people, a nation of people, which are the Edomites. It says, and his number is 600, three score, and six. You have 600, which is 600. Three score is 60. A score is 20. So uh, 20, uh, 20 times 3 is 60. And then 6. So 666. Six, six, which breaks down to the Greek equivalent of three letters, Chi, Psi, Stigma. And Chi, Psi, Stigma, each one of those letters adds up to 666. Six, six. It doesn't really break it down here what it means. You know, so we're going to have to go through, you know, other sources to get more of an understanding. So it just says 666, the meaning of which is the basis of much vain speculation because the mystery, because it's a mystery and the mystery was not revealed to Esau, but it was revealed to the prophets. Let's go to Amos chapter 3 and 7. It says, Surely the Lord power will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. Right. So these mysteries have been revealed because prior to the Lord bringing down a particular empire, mysteries have to be revealed. The people that are ruling have to be told what's going on. They have to be revealed. And then afterward comes the judgment of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. So Colossians chapter 1. Oh, and by the way, man, Satan don't like this. He don't like this uh, lesson for some reason. Because as I was putting, trying to put some, something together, I was drinking a green juice earlier, and the green juice, Satan made me knock it over. It spilled all over my keyboard, all over the floor. You know, I was catching hell trying to put this lesson together. So Lord's will, it'll be edifying lesson. So Colossians 125, where, whereof I am made a mate, uh, a mate where, whereof, Salakia, I am made a minister, this is the Apostle Paul speaking, according to the dispensation of the Most High, which is given to me for you, each prophet has a certain portion given to them, to fulfill the word of the Most High. Even the mystery which hath been hid from ages, which is what? A secret, and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints. So who are the saints? The, the Israelites. But then you have the prophets among the saints that are the ones that are giving these revelations and mysteries and prophecies, so on and so forth. All right. So going back and it goes into the, you know, the uh, Israelite foreigner um, mystery, you know, which was which they the Gentiles or the Israelite foreigners were being brought back into the fold, you know, eventually. But it, but in general, all mysteries are revealed to the prophets. All right, we just read that in Amos 3. And the reason why I said that is, well, see, yes, he never, he, he didn't read the 27th verse, you know, which deals with the Gentiles. You know, you know, how, you know how vocab does. All right, so now, dealing with that, let's go from there, because it said Kai Sai Stigma, right? Now, which is 666. Now, we're going to get into... Um, something called the universal product code so just bear with me one second universal product code is a upc symbol which is the symbol that you see here and these are product codes to identify what the product is you know how many they have available in inventory how many they need to order how many they've sold you know so on and so forth it's a tracking system which was created by an individual by the name of George Laura, which was an Edomite, or seems to be like an Edomite, that worked for a company called IBM, IBM, which pretty much IBM, you know, had a different name. Um, I don't remember offhand right now the old name that they went under, tabulating system or something like that, which the word tabulating is where you get the word tabs or keeping tabs on people. And this is what they did. They set up a system to where they can keep tabs on products. But they had, remember, whatever they do, it's a trial run for something else. You know, so your social security number, these UPC codes, these were all, you know, um, um, things that they did to test them 
or trials for the real deal, you know, which is the MOTB, which is a C hip. Now it says George Joseph Laurel III was an American engineer for IBM at Research Triangle Park in North Carolina. He published 20 bulletins, held 28 patents, and developed the Universal Product Code, UPC, in the early 1970s. He devised the coding and pattern used for the UPC based on Joe Woodland's more general idea for barcodes. And the reason why they have these barcodes is because they want to track. Of course, they're not going to, you know, they have to have a, a trial first. So they're going to do it on products. But eventually people are products. Because when, when you have a slave, a slave is a commodity. A slave is not a person in the eyes of Esau. A slave is nothing more than a commodity. You know, something that you that you buy and sell, you know, on the open stock market. This is why even to this very day, the birth certificates, which is what makes us slaves to, you know, these adhesion contracts are still sold on the stock, open stock market because that's how they trade. Because we are nothing more than commodities to these devils. This is why it says here. In Revelation 18, 11, and the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth their merchandise anymore. Why? Because America, Babylon the Great, will be destroyed. The merchandise, and this is what we are, we're nothing but merch. The merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones. Matter of fact, let's look up this word merchandise. It, ha it goes to the Greek word gomos, which is a, a lading or freight of a ship. Cargo, so we're nothing more than cargo. Oh, uh, you can't say that, man. We're people, man. We're individuals, man. She's a fucking human being. Why must you hate? Inside joke. Merchandise conveyed in a ship. Any merchandise, right? So it goes on to say, the go of gold and silver and precious stones and pearls and fine linen, or, and of pearls and fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet and all the ironwood and all manner of vessels of ivory, and all manner of vessels of most precious wood, and of brass, and iron, and marble. And these are all things that are found here on the shores of America, you know, that they sell. You know, all these nations are bringing all of these different, you know, vessels and clothing or whatever made of all of these different um, um, fabrics and, you know, whatever they have, whatever have you, are being sold here. Then it goes on to say, in cinnamon and odors and ointments, okay, because you could buy furniture, you can buy incense, you can buy perfume, you can buy cologne, you know, you can buy whatever. You can buy spices that come from different parts of the world. It says, and frankincense and wine and oil, right? You can buy wine, you can buy liquor, you know, whatever, and oil and fine flour and wheat and beasts and sheep. Yeah, so you can buy, and horses, you could buy animals. And chariots, you can buy cars. Cars are being made all around the world and that are sent here. It says what? And slaves. See, because to the international banking families, we're nothing more. That's what they call everyone, goyim, which they say goyim means cattle, but goyim really simply just means nations. That's where you get the word goyim from or gentile. It just means nations, you know. But I don't know where they get the term cattle from, but... That's what they call the people, goyim or cattle. You know, so slaves and what? And souls of men. Because America is a big, big on, on selling, you know, or, or you, you're selling, you know, your soul here in America. So like, yeah. That's a big thing that goes on, you know, around the world too, but mainly here in America. Right, so now let's look up this word slaves. And this is something that's traded out on an open stock market. How they do it, you know, they, they have their ways and their secrets. Soma. It says, the body both of men or animals. See? The dead body or corpse. And they did this in, in uh, ancient uh, Rome. You know, they show you that in the movie Gladiator. You know, where they would bring gladiators. They would capture people. They would capture different individuals from different parts of the world. And they would sell them to the Romans as gladiators. They would sell exotic animals, you know. It says a dead body or corpse, the living body of animals, the bodies of planets and stars, 
Uh, so we get the point. The body both of men or animals. All right. So that's what this was all about. You know, the UPC code or the barcodes were a way of tracking products. People are products. Slaves are products to the bankers. Remember that. And if you don't think so, you ain't do enough research yet. Don't worry, little brother. There's more. <laughs> All right, now let's move on. Um, so now we're going to move on from there to the actual UPC or Universal Product Code. All right. Which is right. Nope, that's not it. I thought I had a... Right here. What is a Universal Product Code, UPC? A UPC, short for Universal Product Code, is a type of code printed on retail product packaging to aid in identifying a particular item. It consists of two parts, the machine-readable barcode, which is a series of unique black bars, what you see here, these are the black bars, and the unique 12-digit number beneath it, and these are the numbers beneath it. Now, each, um, each uh, bar, depending on the thickness or how many there are, each represent a number from 1 to 0, you know, from 1 to 10, pretty much. Well, 1 through 9, and then you have the 0. Now, notice that these two numbers at the end, 0 and 5, don't have any letters above them. This is just a part of the tracking system because you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 numbers, as we said he, we read here. Now, when you look at the barcodes, right, um, each, each number, if you, if you go over each number, each number has... A, a bar, you know, with a certain type of thickness to identify when they scan it <clears throat> to identify what this particular product is. You, so you have number one, you have number two, which is two, which are two lines which are spread apart. You have number three, which is two thick lines spread apart. You have four. I'm sorry, this is this is uh, something else. You have four here this line here, then you have number five. So the way they're set up, then you have six. Now six is what? Two small lines side by side. You know, then you have seven, eight, you know, so on and so forth. But what you do have here is if you look at the six, the two lines that are identical side by side at the beginning, middle, and end of the barcode, you have these same lines because these three lines here, one, well, it's actually six lines, one, two, three, that's where you get your six, six, six because when you look at the six, the two lines equal to six. You have a six here, a six there, and a six here. So that's six, six, six. So this is all a part of the same system. It's a, it's a tracking system, and it all revolves around buying and selling. This is why in Revelation... The 13th chapter, it says, the 17th verse, and that no man might buy or sell, save he or only he that had the M-A-R-K or the name of the beast or the number of his name. And the, the angel of the Lord gave the apostle John the number, which is 666. Now, I found some info online here, just typed in a couple of words. This is Greek stigma, Latin stigmata. Greek stigma, stigma, Latin, stigmata, tattoo, brand, mark, blot, scar, prick, social blot, scar of service, burn mark, sign of shame. And the Spirit always has me go to Galatians 6 and 17 to go into that. So we're going to get to that. But before we get into that, let's continue on here. Now what you have here is the really the Karax which the Karax is the delivery system of etching these marks into the skin. All right, now you could brand, you know, with a hot branding iron, or you can prick into the skin. And this is what the Apostle John saw on the island of Patmos when he saw the people coming, you know, and being branded with this particular M-A-R-K, which is the M-O-T-B, which is the C-Hip. 
and everyone that had that MARK was destined to be destroyed, but they also were able to operate and do business, you know, in society. Those that didn't were not able to partake. And this is pretty much, you know, everyone's going to be left to the mercy of the so-called banking elite. You know, but the elect are going to be left to the mercy of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. So, so it says, an all was used to pierce the ears of a slave. An earring was given to show that the slave was attached to his master. And this was the all. Today, it would be in the, in the form of the so-called, you know, uh, jab that is used to send forth the uh, sea hip under the skin or under the, the, you know, in the skull, you know, or wherever they put it at, you know. It says, background information, Greco-Roman culture branded marks where, um, Greco-Roman culture, branded marks were given to domestic animals, slaves, criminals, soldiers, and worshippers, followers, you see. So pretty much, they have everything categorized. Categorio, you know, in um, Revelation 12, you know, the accuser of thy brethren. So, because Esau, his thing is categorizing everything, because everything has to make sense to him. It says it was customary to brand cattle as a means to make theft more difficult. You got? Did you did you hear that? It was customary to brand cattle as a means to make theft more difficult. And this is why they want to brand people with this particular device so that they can't cut out the international banking families from every transaction that they make because they want it all. You know, they're not satisfied with having hundreds of trillions of dollars. They want everything that you have, everything that we have, and they want us as, you know, perpetual slaves for all eternity. This is why they, they created the central bank. And they have central banks around the world working together for the same purpose. To put the whole world into slavery, into debt. Because debt, when someone is in debt, debt brings forth slavery. Because when you have nothing else to pay with money-wise, you have to give up your cattle. You have to give up your home. You have to give up your land, and eventually when there's nothing else to give, you have to give up yourself as a servant, you see? And this is why a lot, this is why sometimes in Israel, Jake would fall, you know, into that. You know, they would fall into uh, poverty, and they would have to sell themselves over to an Israelite, and sometimes they even had to sell themselves over to other nations, you know? And what happened with, when 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 it came to an Israelite, they would um, work for the Israelite for like six years, and then be set free on the seventh year. And by that time, the Israelite master that he worked for would provide a sufficient amount of money and goods so that he can pretty much be sustained again. And if he happened to fall into poverty and be sold to a nation, to another another nation. Then his brother, if he had the money, or if he had the money sufficient enough, he can buy his own freedom, or his his kin can buy his freedom for him. So slavery is, is something that's been around as long as the world has been here. All right? And this is why they're pushing that, that debt slavery on people, because they know that ultimately when you have nowhere to go, you got to come to them. You know, so at the end of the day, this is why Yahweh Shai said, because you have kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them. The man who bore the stigma, a sign of dishonor since antiquity, was given rob to robbers, criminals, slaves, and prisoners. Plato's Law, uh, number 9, 854D, states... Whosoever is caught robbing a temple, if he be a foreigner or slave, he, his curse shall be branded on his forehead. Caligula even branded the foreheads of some citizens who were condemned uh, to forced labor in the construction of buildings and roads. See, the runaway slave was branded on the forehead with the letters F-U-G, meaning fugitivus or fugitive. 
Right. And this is why in slavery, this is another way that America, you know, um, was uh, revived in the same way that the ancient Roman Empire uh, was. When they revived, it pretty much got its power from ancient Rome, not just governmentally or financially, but also in the dealing of slaves, dealing of commerce, business, so on and so forth. Desire for marks. In some situations, marks are given to denote membership in a group, tribe, or cultic deity. Yeah, like you have them Hamites, they have tribal marks. The recruit to the Roman army was marked by tattooed signs on the hand. This mark denotes loyalty to one superior when a, but it was an actual M-A-R-K. You know, because you have Bishop Nathaniel, which teaches and others teach that the right hand represents, you know, loyalty. And then the, the, the forehead represents, you know, your mindset or however they, bro they broke it down. But no, it's going to be something that's actually put in there. Because ancient customs also did the same thing. They were branded on the hand. They were branded on the forehead. But in this case, in today's time, seeing that knowledge has increased, every, they're talking about everything going subdermally, which is under the skin. When a follower was given the sacred mark, he was dedicated to the God and became its servant. Therefore, this servant was put under the God's protection. The servant of the God, Dionysius Bacchus, was given a tattoo of an ivy leaf. See? Dionysius was the God of the grape harvest. Then his master shall bring him to God, and he shall bring him to the door or doorpost, and his master shall pierce his ear with an awl, and he shall serve him permanently. And that goes also with Exodus 21. You know? Uh, Old Testament, interestingly, this uh, rarely corresponds to the Greek understanding of stigma. Matter of fact, before we get to that, because, um, you know, they have the Mark of Cain here too, which the Mark of Cain was actually something physical because he was actually turned leprous. But that has nothing to do with the Mark of the Beast or the M-O-T-B. Now, let's go real quick here to Galatians before we get back. Galatians 6, 17, from henceforth, let no man trouble me. This is the Apostle Paul speaking. For I bear in my body the M-A-R-K-S of the Lord Yahweh Shai. Now, the Lord Yahweh Shai was actually, they were actually M-A-R-Ks pricked into his hands, into his feet, into his side. All right? Now, the Apostle Paul is using it here figuratively, but these are actually M-A-R-K-S's that actually happened. To the Lord. This is why he told Thomas, look, put your hand in my in the prince and put your hand in my side and you'll see that it's me. And when he when he realized it was him, he said, My Lord and my God. Now when we go to the word stigma, right? It comes from the root word from a primary stizo to stick an example prick because you have to cut into to make a certain incision. Uh, let me get this other precept real quick, and then we get back to it. Uh, all right, cool. So stigma, right? It says, a mark pricked in or branded upon the body. To ancient Oriental usage, slaves and soldiers bore the name or the stamp of their master or commander branded or pricked cut into their bodies to indicate what master or general they belong to right and just like in revelation 13 this mark here i'm not sure if, if it's going to say it here uh let's see that's which is karagma which is the actual device that makes you the the um the um the slave let me see right right of the mark stamped on the forehead or the right hand as the what badge of the followers of the antichrist you see so the actual branding it's the actual badge when you go to work you have to have a badge right and you know in certain places you know to get in the building and out they give you a particular badge and you wave the badge or you swipe the badge and you can get in and out. You know, I worked for Amazon years ago and, and, and that was so. I had a badge, I had to wave it to get in, you know, to the, to the place. But they're going to actually put it into someone. As we read over here, 
to make it more difficult for to steal. See? So you won't be able to operate in this system that's coming without the M-A-R-K which is, or the M-O-T-B, which is the C-Hip of Esau. All right? So now going back, so it says, and there were even some devotees, this is going back to the word stigma, there, there were even some devotees who stamped themselves in, the, in this way in the, uh, with the token of their gods. All right? Stizo to stick, prick, a M-A-R-K incised or punched for recognition of ownership. You see? And Bishop Nathaniel is not a dummy. Bishop Nathaniel is a very astute and very good uh, uh, researcher. So he knows if he goes to these words, he'd be able to, to understand it if the Spirit is working with him. Unless he took the bag or the Lord just took it from him temporarily. And I say that because even when I was setting the lesson up, I pulled up this, this uh, video that Elder Apostle Tahar did. What I did was I, ha I watched the whole video, so it started anew. So I just, I just scrolled it forward to just have this just so, so you could see Bishop Nathaniel and look where it landed on. 31, 31. Three and one is four. Three and one is four. That's two fours. And four represents mercy. You know? So... The Lord, you know, we believe he's going to have mercy on Bishop Nathaniel. He just got him blinded for the time being. And eventually he's going to get the oil back, you know. And if he doesn't get it back on this side, he'll get it back on the other side. But we believe the Lord is going to have mercy on him, you know, even though you get angry and upset. But we have to understand that our emotions have nothing to play in the Most High's plans. It doesn't matter what we feel like. Whatever the Lord wants, that's what's going to go down. When the Most High took Ezekiel's wife, you know, from him, he told him, you better not cry. When the Lord took the two sons of Aaron, you know, he told him, you better not uncover your head. You better not cry. You know, the Most High, man, he's, you know, Yahweh is, is, is terrible. You know, so our emotions play nothing in the, the scheme of things when it comes to Yahweh Bashem Shai's plans. All right, so going back, let's see what else we could glean from here. So that was stigma, scar of service, mark, right? So this was an actual M-A-R-K's that was on the Lord's body, which goes into the word stigma. And when we go back to Revelation 13, right, the 18th verse where it brings out the number of the beast or the man, 666, when you go to the actual Greek of it, is broken down as Chi, Psi, Stigma. The last letter, Stigma, which it doesn't really break it down here, but when you go, and the Spirit of the Lord is beautiful because He made sure that there was a place in the Bible, in the Scriptures, that goes into that word Stigma. And it actually explains what the word Stigma means. Now, when we go to Leviticus 19 and uh, 28, it says, you shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor print any what? M-A-R-K's upon you. I am the Lord. This is where looking up words in the original language is so key and very important. Because when you look up the M-A-R-K of Cain, right? M-A-R-K of Cain, right? It says, And the Lord said unto him, Therefore, whosoever slayeth Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord said, A M A R K upon Cain, lest any finding him should kill him. So if you read it in English, like, well, that's the same thing because it says it's using the same English word. But when you go to the Hebrew of Cain, the, mark, the M A R K, right? <laughs> it's the word awath. All right? Sign, signal, a distinguishing mark, because there was an actual curse put on him, which was the Lord stripped him of his pigment. And this is why the um, the uh, Mormons use this, but in reverse. They say that to have dark skin is a curse, but the scriptures say that to have so-called white looking skin is a curse. That is leprosy, but they tried to flip it. 
you know, because otherwise the narrative wouldn't fit them. Just like Vocab and his clonies, they, they have to have something called replacement theology where they remove Israel out of the Bible and put themselves in it. That's the only way it'll work. Taking out something so you can be a part of it. And the Lord's going to get them devils for that. So when we go, and this was, this was actually a physical mark on Cain, right? When we go to Ezekiel, right? We're going to come back to this, Ezekiel 9 and 4. But when we go to Leviticus 19 and 28, this M-A-R-K-S here is also physical. Because the word print is used, meaning to cut into, and then M-A-R-K-S, upon you. Why? Because that is a devotion to other gods. Because the Most High didn't tell us to mark our, our, ourselves like that. The Lord marked us spiritually, not physically. Right, so when we look up the word, you have cuttings, shirat, you have uh, print, and then you have the word M-A-R-K-S, which goes to the Greek word kwai kwai. Now the Greek word, I'm sorry, the Hebrew word kwai kwai is the Hebrew equivalent of the Greek word karagma, also stigma, Right? Uh, same as Kawhi. So it says here, what incision? What is an incision? A cutting in. Incision or what? Gash. Not Ozian gash, inside joke, but a gash. Incision. A surgical cut made in skin or flesh. See? And that's where they want to use, this is why this devil Harari Noah Harari Yuval or whatever the hell his name is. He's all, always talking about tracking people subdermally. Klaus Schwab, Cotton Schwab, always talks about, you know, tracking people subdermally. But especially that other, that mole, that, that uh, little hat mole. You know, he's always speaking about that. It says a M-A-R-K or decoration cut into a surface. Come on, man. And it's not that hard. Incision, imprintment, tattoo, mark. Because when you actually get a tattoo, what happens? There's an actual needle used, and that needle cuts into your flesh to put that ink in there to draw whatever it is that you're getting tattooed on your flesh, which you shouldn't do that. You know? And then what? M-A-R-K. So that's why it's important to go into the actual word language that this word came into in order to be able to understand better now when we go to ezekiel 9 and 4 and the lord said unto him go through the midst of the city through the midst of jerusalem and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof when you go to this word mark in the hebrew once again because if you don't then you oh these are all the same word i don't understand it's all the same word why can't it just be the same so yeah, con, sub, subcutaneous, meaning under the nails. Yep, there's also another subcutaneous, sub, yeah, that's under the nails. Um, when you look at this word M-A-R-K here, this word here is thawah, which is different from awath for Cain, which awath was an actual physical mark put upon Cain. Then you have the word kwai kwai, which is an actual physical M-A-R-K, you know, which the kwai kwai is synonymous with the karagma and stigma. All right? And the thawa is a spiritual M-A-R-K from the Lord Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Because the Most High is spiritual. Esau is carnal. So it says, desire mark, mark as a sign of exemption from judgment. So this is, these are individual spirits out here of Israel that are part of the elect, that are set aside so that they won't be judged. They're exempted from judgment because they are part of the elect and they will be saved. So you see how if, when you look up these words in the or, original language, how it makes more sense, how it gives you a better understanding. And like Elder Apostle Tara said, and we've been saying this for years, why don't you just you know keep Easter? Well, no, that's talking about the past. No, but it says Easter. Keep Easter. 
You know, get your whole congregation to paint purple bunny eggs, purple and uh, and uh, gold bunny eggs, and hide them, and have the cheerings go and get them. Don't celebrate the Passover. Celebrate Easter. Uh, Acts twelve and four says Easter. But it's a matter of convenience when it comes to that. So, we we'll see, we'll see. So it goes on to say Old Testament. Interestingly, this rarely corresponds to the Greek understanding of stigma. Instead of meaning stigma, this mean this term literally means a little ball, a piece of jewelry, point, and moment. Other Hebrew terms convey the notion of an M-A-R-K expressing attachment to a man or to the Most High, right? Which that, that's what we read, the Thawah. When a slave wanted to attach himself to his master, the slave's ear was pierced by an awl at the doorpost in the Most High's presence. The slave's earring indicated a mark of slavery and sign of becoming protected by his master. And when, when you take this uh, karagma <clears throat> from these de devils, the sea ragamuffin, that's going to be a protection. You're going to make him your God and you're going to be his slave, his devotee, you know, his disciple. And that's why they want to do it. So this, I don't know why they, they said that up here, but this, the Old Testament quite, quite corresponds with stigma, corresponds with charagma. All right. It says sacral marks, sacral markings are found in Jacob's prophetic mission and in the Most High's committed commitment to Jerusalem and Isaiah 44 5 Jacob claims this one who shall write on his hand the Lord's this alludes to the Babylonian custom of tattooing the slave's hand likewise the Most High makes a confession of Jerusalem in caring for the city uh, for the Most High has written your name Jerusalem in his hands this helps us understand why the feast of the Passover and redemption of the firstborn are to be taken seriously as if uh, alright so we you know, I had to get back to that um, the market came which we already broke that down which was a physical mark that was placed upon Cain, which was leprosy, which was the same um, thing that happened to Miriam. Miriam had an actual physical M-A-R-K on her when the Lord stripped her of her, of her pigment and it told, told us that she was turned uh, white as snow. All right? Then it says, New Testament. Interestingly, this term occurs only once, which Barakate Yahweh B'Hashem Shai, because otherwise... You know, it, it could have been just left to interpretation. In Galatians 6, 17, it is unclear whether or not Paul is speaking figuratively or literally. He was speaking figuratively, but he was speaking literally of the prints that were in Yahushai's hands, his feet, and his side. And that was, that was actual and factual. Matter of fact, I believe that's St. John 20, the 20th chapter. Try print. Yep. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord, but he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hand the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. Let me see. All right. So let's look up this word print real quick. Print. The word is tupos or typos. Tupos, you know, you type. It says the M-A-R-K of a stroke or blow. Print. A figure formed by a blow or impression of a former of a figure or, or image. In this case is what? The M-O-T-B, which is the C hip, of the image of the gods. Right? Because you had devotees that 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 uh that M-A-R-K themselves like that form. Uh, so you get the idea. It could be either way. It could be either f uh, physical or spiritual. In this case, it speak. This is talking about physical. Because if somebody said, "No, the, the prince and the Lord, they were really spiritual," they were. Then that that individual is gone. He he got issues, because Yahushua even said down here. Then said he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. Because there were actually wounds in the Lord from the piercing that he received. And in this article here, 
at the beginning, they showed you what? The all, which looks just like the delivery system of the C-hip that they use now to insert, you know, that device that will make the person that receives it a total slave. All right. And it goes on and on this, this uh, article, you know, and I put this in the description box in case any brothers wanted to, you know, have a little fun with it. But that's the 666, the Kai Sai stigma. And when you break it down, you know, it, it all adds up, you know, if you take the time to look into it, you know. But if you sold out, you're not going to do this because the Lord is not going to, you know, oh, I'm sorry, the international bankers, your lords, are not going to allow you to do this, you know, because you you are, you um sold out, therefore you have to, Bow down to your master. You know, so it's going to be found out because the evidence is all in place. 2023 is going to be a very interesting year. You know, like Elder Pastor said, don't be surprised if a, if a major thing happens once, you know, the whole, you know, shithole goes down. Once uh, 2023 comes in, you know, we're waiting to see what's going to happen. Um, You know, so keep your eyes open. You know, and uh, be continual in prayer. And uh, Lord's will, 2023, the Lord will get us out of here, you know. And they really, really push this M-A-R-K, this M-O-T-B, this C-HIP. Uh, so with that, I pray that you brothers and few sisters have been edified. To the next time I say, Shalom.